Welcome to Instancing with Chops. Channel operators are a great way to work with instancing data and one of the most intuitive ways to understand how instances work. Let's get started by looking at how we can create instances with a pattern chop. Let's open up the opcreate dialog and add a pattern chop here into our network. On the pattern chop, let's turn down the number of samples to 50 by changing that in the length parameter. And let's change the name of our channel to sign. Next, let's connect our pattern one to another pattern chop. This pattern chop will have a type of cosine. Here we have a sine pattern and a cosine pattern. On our cosine, let's make sure we change the channel name to be cosine so we have a matching name to the type of pattern. Next, let's use a merge chop to combine both our sine and cosine patterns into a single operator. Finally, let's connect this to a null chop. On our null chop, let's make this viewer active. Right click inside of the viewer and select dots per sample. Here we can see a dot for each sample inside of our multi sample chop. What we'll do is we'll draw an instance for each one of our samples. Our sine channel will describe the tx positions, and our cosine channel will describe the ty positions. Let's set that up. We can add a circle stop here into our network. Let's go ahead and change our radius to 0.1 for our circle stop. Let's right click on the output, add a geometry component to our network. And on our geometry component, let's head over to the instance page, turn on instancing, and we'll use our null one chop to be our translate op. Next, for our translate x parameter, we'll use the sine channel. For our translate y parameter, we'll use our cosine channel. Let's make our geometry component viewer active with the A key and go to home with the H key. Here we can see we, that we have a new instance for each sample. Let's increase the radius of our circle. We can do that by right clicking on the wire between our merge and null and selecting insert operator. Let's add a math chop to our network. Here on the multi add page, we can use the multiply parameter to scale up the diameter of our circle. Let's take a look at another way that we could use chops to create instances. Let's start by adding a noise chop to our network. The noise chop will de describe an ever-changing position that will watch through time. On the channel page, let's use a little pattern expansion, T square brackets, X, Y, Z, to create three channels, a TX, TY, and TZ channel. On the common page, let's turn off time slice, and next let's connect our noise chop to a trail chop. Our trail chop will collect a history of positions. Here, let's change this to be measured as samples, and let's turn our samples down to just 200. Let's connect this to a null chop, and let's name this null chop null inst for null instances. Let's see if we can visualize these. Let's begin by adding a box op into our network and connecting our box op to a geometry comp. On the geometry component, let's head to the instance page, turn on instancing, and in this case, we're gonna use our null instance chop as our default instance op. We'll do this because this will allow us to use our same channel operator across many different parameters. Let's go ahead and describe our TX positions as coming from channel TX, TY from TY, and TZ from TZ. It's hard to see all of our instances at this point, so let's make our box up a little smaller. Let's turn its size down to 0.02. This looks great, and we can see all of our instances as being collected in space. Let's make a few other changes. Let's increase the scale of our positions as they move. We can do that by inserting a math chop after our noise chop, and let's increase the scale of this on the multi-add page by changing the multiply parameter to three. We can now see that we cover a little more space here. Now, what I'd like to do is I would like to orient, I would like to arrange and position, rotate my instances to follow the trajectory of their movement. What we'll do is we'll take advantage of the instance two page and the rotate two vector parameters in order to accomplish this. 
Here, we need to compute a vector that represents a rotation vector. This is a pretty simple operation for us to accomplish, and we can do it with just a few operators. To make this happen, we need to collect a past position for our points. Here, our noise represents our current position. So let's add a delay chop into our network, connect our math chop to the delay, and this will be our position at some time in the past. Let's change this to be measured as frames and set this to be a delay of one frame. We now have our set of positions as represented one frame ago. Let's rename this. We can use a rename chop to then rename this from to past underscore star, which will then match to past TX, past TY, and past TZ. Let's also collect these past positions in our trail. Next, let's add a select chop. We'll select out our current positions and our past positions. And our select chop, our first select chop, let's first collect T star. This will be all of our current positions. In select two, let's select out past star. This will select only our past positions. Next, let's use a math chop. We can compute the vector that will represent our rotation vector, in this case, by subtracting these two operators from one another. On our combined chops page, let's select subtract. We now have a new set of channels that represent our rotation vector. Let's rename them. We can use a rename chop to make sure that these are named correctly. And let's call this instead rot vec square brackets, x, y, z. And we should now have a rotation vector for x, y, and z. Next, let's go ahead and add a merge chop here into our network. We need to collect both our current positions and our rotation vector positions into one operator. We already have a null in place, so let's go ahead and replace what's connected to our null inst to come from our merge chop. Next, let's head back over to our geometry component. And in our rotate two vector parameters, let's select rot vec x, our rotation vector for x, for y, and for z. It's difficult to see the rotation as represented here. Let's make a change to our box top. Let's increase the scale of our tz parameter to be just 0.2. We now see that our instances are rotated along their vector of movement. This is a great way for us to be able to calculate the rotation vector and represent that here inside of our instances. As a review, one quick thing to understand and hold on to is that our math operation is happening for every sample. So we can see that TX, TY, and TZ and our past TX, past TY, and past TZ are subtracted from one another based on their sample index. This is what gives us the rotation that we need in order to see what's happening here. Let's add one other attribute. Let's go ahead and think about how we might represent our color for these in the past. Let's add a pattern chop here to our network. In our pattern chop, let's go ahead and make sure that we have the same number in our pattern as we might have in our trail. Here in our trail, let's grab our window length, drag that over to our pattern chop, and drop that on our length parameter and set it as a reference. Let's change this to be a ramp. And let's change this channel to read just the R channel. Let's go ahead and merge this data in with our other merge. Here in our merge shop, we have our TX, TY, TZ, our rotation for X, Y, and Z, and just an R channel. Let's head back over to our geometry component. On the, the instance two page, for our color, let's select R. Here we can now see that our G, B, and A channels, as not supplied, are going to have values of one, and our R channel will change from the beginning to the end, going from white all the way down to blue, or in this case, from zero to one. There are lots of other ways we can manipulate our 
instances with channel operators, and this is just an exciting start.